Okay, everyone, we'll just wait for other folks to join. I know some of us were in a previous meeting. That's just wrapping up. Hi everyone, I am uh, Pushkar. I am the facilitator for the meeting today. First time as facilitator, so go easy on me. Uh, we'll start in a couple of minutes. I know some folks, Brandon, Emily and others are wrapping up the other meeting and I see they joined. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I, did, I did a horrible thing. I, I dragged the meeting way over time. No worries, <laughs> you're fine. Uh, okay, so just some quick logistics. Uh, this is a reminder that this meeting is being recorded and posted to YouTube shortly after. Your participation in these meetings is in agreement to abide by the six security code of conduct, which can be found in the repo. So I've shared the links to the agenda uh, and the meeting minutes in the chat. I'll also share it uh, on screen and uh, then we can get started. So I see folks are still trickling in. Um, one, uh, I think important update in terms of agenda we have is from Magno. So maybe Magno, you can uh share that first and then we can see if we need to move on to some other topics or others others if they have anything to discuss no, no problem yeah so yeah i just received an email from jen half an hour ago and uh she said that she had a family issue an urgent matter that she won't be able to attend today to present um the the matter attack miter attack for containers right um what i can um tell you guys so far is that um they're working on on a, a version for the 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 matter attack for containers right on um since uh Re jen released a blog post last year on december uh 17 i can get you the link uh soon um but but yeah, and and we've been we reach out to them and uh, we've been helping them with like providing 
uh, evidence of real world scenarios and everything. And uh, they're planning to release the draft version publicly to the community next week. So I think uh, we will definitely reschedule this meeting after the, 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 the draft for the attack for containers is published. So yeah, that, that's all I can say. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mago, for the update. So it seems like uh, February 24th meeting would make more sense versus the next one. Is that correct? Uh, I'll have to double check with her. So okay. I'll, I'll update, I'll, I'll get the, the updated date next week. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good, thank you. So we also need some scribes uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, uh, but most likely this will be a quick meeting uh, now that the uh, proposed agenda topic is uh, has to be rescheduled. Uh, yeah, I, I can't access the, the Google Doc for some reason, but... Um... I was just having that same problem. I thought it was just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it just happened for me too. I started typing. Yeah, I can access it now. So hopefully it gets back to you all as well. So I think yeah, that means but... your scribe as well. Sorry. Yeah, if, if, we have, uh, if we have time, um, uh, I'd like to kind of discuss a little bit about um the the presentation that we had last week around the linux um this the linux foundation security scanning service and kind of i i see justin's on uh, on the call today so kind of figure out a little bit about that in terms of what we can do to engage there as well as you know how we are going to see that as part of the toc process yeah, yeah, I think we have time so we can discuss that now and then I'm thinking we'll get to the updates from John and Andrew. So quick, quick update from me. Um, on the, the container, uh, oh, sorry, the, the supply chain working group, um, we're, we're progressing. There's quite a few people uh, contributing now to the, the document. Still got a fair way to go, I'd say. Um, but the conversations we're having during the meeting and, and offline are, are pretty fruitful. And I think we're starting to get some decent best practices into that document. But still, as I say, quite a way to go. They're in the chat room that we have the on the Slack channel. Uh, there's a really interesting article that was uh, published um, about uh, dependency confusion. Uh, I'd recommend people read it, but it was quite nicely aligned to some of the work that we're doing within there. So... Uh, Definitely one for the uh, the list of references and recommend people read it. That's a brief update for me. Jonathan, are you thinking of a follow-up call to bring together the, the offline work? Or how do you want to go from, from this point on? It's really the, the regular uh, Friday meeting calls that we have, just trying to update that document. Uh, I think in, in uh, sort of three, four weeks, we should come back to the uh, the formal group and, and sort of report on our progress. Uh, but everything that we're doing uh, around the working group is funneled in that Friday call at the moment. Fantastic. Cool. So, John, for the benefit of others uh, in the meeting, is, is there a way uh, where people can join the Friday call? What would you recommend? Completely. Uh, there's um, uh, the Slack channel, the details are in the Slack channel for with uh, the Zoom meeting details and the link to the paper we're writing as well. Okay. All right. Could I... uh, it's, it's, on the, it's on the CNCF calendar now, if you subscribe to the CNCF calendar. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, Jonathan, do, do you think that it would be um, useful to also put that on the, the README so that anyone that comes by the page can kind of go directly to it? Uh, which README are you referring to? The, the CNCF, the Six Security README. Sure, I'd be hap happy to. Okay. Yep, happy to do that. Um, also, I, I'm not sure which Zoom um, that you're using. Are there kind of, I saw the question about um, the meeting recordings, is that being set up? Uh, or if not, I was thinking that if you use the, this, this meeting um, ID, it will be uploaded automatically. 
Yeah. Brandon, they have a separate meeting oh, they have a separate one? Okay. through the SIG security. It has the recording enabled, but they're not being posted to YouTube. They have to be pulled out. Gotcha, gotcha. Is that something I can do or help with? or? I think that's something that only the uh, chairs can control. So let me go back through. I'll take an action to go back through and pull the um, recordings out and get them posted into a document or an agenda note if it's the one that's in the um, channel. Great. Thank you. Jonathan, one more question. So in discussing supply chain security as a whole, there's many different areas that come together. Are there particular areas where you're looking for help? Say key management is a, is a topic that's often unresolved or, or there's different opinions. Uh, or, or runtime security, uh, something like that. Absolutely. We're, well, we're open to contributions for every single uh, one of those. I think PKI, uh, I believe Cole, who's on the line, took that uh, particular area, but uh, I'm sure would be open for any contributions around uh, around supply chain security. I think for runtime or runtime or, or perhaps some of the protections we can put within the software factory itself, we're probably a little light at the moment. Thanks, John. All right, great. Uh, so I know Brandon and Andrew have a couple of updates. So whoever wants to go next, go for it. Uh, Andy, you can go ahead. Thanks, Brandon. I was about to say the same. Um, uh, yeah, just a quick one from me. Uh, it is uh, an appeal for papers. The SANS Cloud Security Summit is uh, now free this year, whereas traditionally they weren't. And uh, the CFP is open until the 22nd of Feb and is well aligned to the copious interests of this group. There are lots of topics they're interested in, specifically, probably as usual, case studies, best practices, innovation, identity, hybrid environments, and all the good stuff. Um, I will post what I've just said into Slack and into this channel. Um, oh, you beat me to it. Thank you, Magnum. <laughs> Magno. Uh, there you go. I'll put those notes in there as well. Uh, yes, so it uh, should be good. I will also be uh, slinging my oar in with something as yet undecided. Uh, and all are welcome. Please do submit. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Brandon, you want to go next? Yeah, so um, this is more kind of like a, a quick discussion. I don't know whether it's maybe we can have, have this offline as well, but this is kind of more for, um, more for Justin, I think. We, we had a presentation last week um, uh, about the Linux Foundation scanning tools. Um, um, I forget what it's called, LN, LNX or something like that. Um, and we were wondering whether um, are there any plans kind of to integrate this into the, the project process for TOC? Um, is there anything that we can do uh, from the SIG perspective to kind of evaluate this or, you know, start integrating the use of it into our assessment process. Just looking at the notes, it seems like it's called LFX. Right, okay, yeah. Hey, Brandon, can you do a quick recap on what was specifically discussed at that meeting for folks that may not have been able to meet it or had a chance to watch the video. Yeah, so so the um the meeting was about um so Shubra gave a kind of an overview of the Linux Foundation. They have um they have a bunch of uh, a suite of things, right? So one of it was like the the um the landscape stuff and all the, the stuff that Linux Foundation does. And they have this new um, new solution, which is kind of like in, in beta. And the idea is they are providing kind of like a, a scanning solution for uh, Linux Foundation uh, projects. And so it is a dashboard um, where they kind of scan the different projects in the Linux Foundation. They come up with reports. And the idea for this is to kind of provide um, you know, show show people that the projects have gone through 
security testing that there is a way for them to evaluate the security of the open source projects when they want to use them within enterprise, uh, amongst many other things. So it seemed like they wanted to kind of build um, what they were doing into kind of like something like to the CI badging system. Um, as I think one of the, the things that came to mind was, is this something that, you know, we could say as part of, um, you know, the, the graduation process or incubation process that they have to be configured with this, scanning has to be done and you know, a certain percentage of their projects or the, the code has to be scannable or set up for scanning. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely something we should, it would be helpful for, to evaluate like what we think would be most useful. I mean, I think that if, if it goes into the badging program, then obviously we're going to also kind of automatically adopt it. So that would be one route, but I think, um, while it's in beta, maybe we want to try and help some projects try it out in CNCF and see if see what's working for them, what's not working for them, whether they find it easy to adopt and things, like, and what see what value they're getting from it. From it, I think that would be something that it'd be good if some people could handhold it through some projects and see help help them try it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds good, and maybe we can see whether we can get a, a few um, logins from for you know the assessment project leads and then they can evaluate try and include some of that in the assessments as well we have the build pack assessments um either starting soon or started or going on um would that be a potential uh project that we can roll into this um, yeah, I think that's, I think first we have to figure out how we are going to get the, the logins because we, we can't access it yet, I think. Um, so I can take that as an action item um, to kind of figure out how we can get access to that. So the, yeah. the BuildPex team already produced their self-assessment without being aware up front that this would have been an ask. I think at this point, this is probably too late. It's also unclear of like which of the tools for example, there's a partnership with SNCC. That's great. A lot of projects would, would, use, would like to use SNCC, but they don't have the resources to pay for a paid subscription or need to find a sponsor to do so. Looking at the security tools on their LFX staff, there's like Cloud Foundry. So not sure how, well, it might be applicable to, to build packs, but it not, might not be applicable to other projects. To use Cloud Foundry, so we need to do some work to to evaluate. Like, think, what of these things should make it there? Go ahead, Justin. That's the results for scanning Cloud Foundry, not for. I think. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. My coffee has yet to kick in today. <laughs> these these are projects that have used the scanning. That they're highlighting there. Yeah, I, I think we also kind of need access to it. So you know, whenever that becomes available, uh, we can we can kind of also look at this as like more of an evaluation. So anything in retrospect, right? We can look at the results of the scans of those projects and kind of look at it, how it would have affected the security assessments and evaluate whether it's a useful metric or not. Yeah. Looks like sign up is like you can sign up. I'm using my Linux Foundation account and it lets me through. It does, however, ask for adding a public Git repository. Let me, let me do some exploration and report back. Is that from Snake? This is from LFX. Oh, LFX. security tools okay yeah. yeah if it's tied into snake uh, uh i think that's that's the the requirement for for snake once you log in 
uh, you tie to your public GitHub account, and then you can add your your like public open source projects to that. So they it's gonna start scanning. Yep, that's right. All right. It, do we have any other comments on this topic from anyone else? Yeah, one one just comment uh, that I noticed <clears throat> went to the Linux Foundation uh, portal. This is something called Red Team Project. And under the Red Team Project, there are a number of security tools that have been mentioned. Now, I have not investigated enough to make any judgment at this point, but they might be relevant to our discussions. And uh, I don't know if anyone else here in this uh, group <clears throat> that may have been exposed to those. And if so, I would be interested also to knowing as to what their uh, observations are or comments are. Uh, it meant for, I believe, as a number of security tools, including the pen testing, containerized, uh, uh, you know, pen testing, risk analysis, <clears throat> uh, this kind of thing. So. Right. Uh, TK, do you mind sending the link to the dashboard? Sure. I would, I would do so in the chat, uh, chat okay. message box. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so it looks like uh, Andre also has an update on the security day. Uh, Andre, go for it. Correct. Thanks, Pushkar. So we are finalizing the program committee. Uh, a number of you had expressed interest to participate. This is Cloud Native Security Day for KubeCon Europe. We are go doing a round of making sure everyone is still interested to participate. Those of you who expressed interest to do so and that if you haven't obtained your SIG membership that you do so, that you familiarize with what's the charter of this group, what's Cloud Native Security Day at the end of the day ultimately all about. And as part of that, that you just put your name onto the, the SIG membership if you've been a regular attendee of these calls for a period of time. Moving on from there, well, we, we are engaged with the LF uh, planning team for the event, and there's going to be coordination logistics. CFP is open. I know folks had made some comments on the channel around whether the dates could be shuffled around to allow KubeCon acceptance or a rejection of talks uh, to happen and people to know whether like maybe they could reuse those talks here. We did check with the team at Linux Foundation and it created a lot of uh, pressure and moving, moving dates around, particularly it would give presenters a much shorter runway to prepare presentations. And on the back end, it created a lot of other complications. So dates will remain as is. We did try to look into that. Emily, I don't know if you wanna add some extra color to that, but that's where we're at. Uh, they updated the site with more information. So if you are interested in applying for KubeCon and submitting a CFP there, as well as for Security Day, you can certainly do both. And then the Linux um, Foundations Program Committee is going to work through and kind of do an audit to make sure that we don't inadvertently force you to talk twice at the same event. But if you get picked for KubeCon, we we believe and the organization believes that you want to make that your stage and not cloud native security day. At the same time, we would encourage you to think of clouds for cloud native security day to be targeted at a primarily security audience, um, more so than while well, reusing something you would, you would present somewhere else, or if you had great experience on, on a subject you've you worked on, but you can hone that a little bit to be security focused, that would be fantastic. That is the goal of this very special arena that we only get to have twice a year. 
Thanks, yeah. Pushkar. That's it. I don't know if anyone has questions or comments, but feel free to tag me on Slack or on the Cloud Native Security Day issue. A, a quick question about the um, Cloud Native Security Day. Uh, so uh, do we have any uh, dates to plan for the timeline for the CFC reviews? Yes, I did get your confirmation, Itai. Uh, thanks. thanks for that. I will reply to the group with the timeline we're looking at. I will okay. I'll give you a sneak peek of, of that right away before distributing to the wider group. We're still waiting for a few other confirmations to come through before kicking off the, the work stream. Thank you. No, I can wait. I just uh, wanted to make sure that we'll be fine. Right. Any other questions on security day from anyone? I would like to say that even if you can't attend or you can't submit a CFE, please tweet about it and share it with your network. We had a ton, a ton, a ton of attendees last year, and we're also going to be running the Capture the Flag event again this year. So stay tuned for more information about that at a later date. But please, please share that. That's actually a huge level of visibility for the SIG and for the CNCF across the community, bringing more of the security professionals in with the developers and SREs and open source projects. Tune in tonight to uh, Cloud Native TV. I'll be talking a little bit about this. Uh... So yeah, I'm gonna definitely give the, I wanna make sure the group, cause I, I think it's, again, it's, I like a co educated day on, on your KubeCon that has to do with security specifically, because look, you'll get, we all know during the course of even like uh, virtual events, it's like you get bombarded with so much stuff. This is very specific to the audience here. And I think there's gonna be amazing content uh, just from the whole swath of security. So it's awesome. And, and likelihood as it happens with trends, a lot of it's going to revolve around supply chain security this year, which is a topic that needs a lot of attention right now. It's, it's, it's great. Like if like you have great folks here that are experts and are trying to advance the space, but feel free to, to lean on those people if you have ideas in mind that are not quite fully formed and, and you could use some help. Uh, Jonathan is available. Mr. Dan Pop is available. All of this is really good. And Dan, please send your, send the link to your to your stream so folks are available. It's, it's uh, the CNCF stream. I'll put it in the channel. No problem. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, okay. Anything else on Security Day from anyone? No. I know that uh, Dan wanted to uh, turn this into an improv session today, but. <laughs> I, I was waiting for Vinay. I was, you know, Vinay really kicks us off. You know, he's 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 got a he's got a way about him. So I, I do have one joke. Why did the IT team set up the remote office from the beach? Why? It was too cloudy. You can, can you top that, Vinay? Come on. Can you top? No, that? I, I I can't. I can't. I, I, that was a good one, Andres. <laughs> What do you call a, tur a turtle that surfs the dark web? A tour toys. I'll stop. I'll stop. Push Mark, could you end the meeting, please, quickly? I'm kind of curious how many more of these you have. Each <laughs> I, I am actually all for improv uh, dance, so we should sync up later. I am a big fan of improv. Yeah, yeah, Andrews, you know, maybe we can have this as part of uh, um, Connie the Security Day. <laughs> If security info or something like that. that let's, make this, let's make this a feature in every meeting. We'll give five minutes to, Andrea to do like a couple of jokes. And if it goes well, you know, let's use the entire meeting for it. Hey, you're supposed to, to train your strengths, not your weaknesses, or play to your strengths, not your weaknesses. So, no, I will not be doing that. <laughs> okay, all right. So, okay. guys, okay, everyone uh, back to business. So, I think we don't have any other. Uh, updates from anyone. So I'll make one uh, last as the facilitator. So we had our first meeting today on uh, retrospectives for the security white paper. Uh, we five or six of us met, uh, we discussed basically in terms of next steps, a survey that would be drafted soon. 
to get answers and information about things we want to know about the white paper and its distribution as well as how it was received. Uh, so we will be drafting that today, uh, uh, starting today and in a couple of weeks time we'll meet again. Uh, if you want to be involved uh, and haven't sent me already an email, uh, feel free to send me one uh, and I'll set, set up the invite for the retrospective about a couple of weeks from now. Uh, same time, one hour before our SIG security weekly meeting. Uh, second update, there would be more to do with uh, anecdotal feedback. Anything you have heard as an author or a contributor of SIG security or a reader of the paper where you want to share some details, feel free to uh, let us know. Uh, either put it in our SIG security white paper channel as a post or share it with me. Uh, and if you want to be invited, also DM me on Slack because I tend to miss Zoom direct DMs. So I'll send you the invite for next the next time when we meet again. All right. So any questions on this? Okay. So we have. Reached, we are at 10 30 pacific right now if no more topics we can probably close early or people can continue with uh, improv sessions or jokes i am all for it uh, but if not uh, we can finish for the day today's ready thank you have a good one well, why are you putting me on the spot uh, <laughs> what is this it's all about <laughs> so, improv that's improv do, baby do you know something i don't know about myself <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andres is too. It's too easy for me to pick on Andres all the time. So, I pick on somebody else. All right. Okay. So, it looks like we have we missed one update uh, uh, from Aradna. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Aradna. Sorry. Um, which update? <laughs> I'm spaced out there for a minute. Okay. If uh, maybe I misunderstood then. In that case, I think it's, we are. It's for improv, right? <laughs> no, I'm not improv person. Sorry. All right. Okay. So if no update, then great. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for the meeting. Uh, I know I have some folks who have shared interest with improv today. I think that I will consider that as a win for today's meeting. And uh, let's catch up again next uh, next week. Thank you. Thanks, Pushka. Thanks, Pushka. Thank you. Pushka. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yes, bye. Emily, I'll ping you on Slack. Thanks. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye.